Let's continue our series on bone densitometry and DEXA scanning and look at scanning the elderly spine. When we do bone densitometry, we generally look at the spine, the hip, and at times the extremities. This allows us to quantify and compare bone density. How many older people have low back pain or back pain period? Is it a process of growing older? What happens to our spine as we grow older? We get age-related spinal pathology. Compare the x-ray to the drawing. You'll notice that in both, the joint spaces are almost non-existent because the discs have worn out. You'll also notice that the vertebra are collapsing and on top of that we're starting to build up osteophytes or bone bridges in between the vertebra. Take a look at the diagram above and follow the progression from a normal lumbar spine all the way through to a severely degenerative osteoarthritis of the spine. First notice the disc space between each one of the vertebra on the normal vertebra of the lumbar spine. And then as the disease begins to progress, what happens to the disc space in between each one of the vertebra? They begin to deteriorate. During this degeneration, some of the spinal discs will rupture. And if the spinal disc ruptures and the ruptures posteriorly, or back on the back side of the disc, it actually pushes into the spinal cord causing pain. As the disease progresses, all of the disc space are basically gone. And now the vertebra have fused together or they're rubbing on top of each other bone on bone. There is no stability left in the spine. It's extremely painful and we're also pushing in on the spinal cord causing pain. Progressive degenerative osteoarthritis in the lower back is common among people as they age. Not only is it painful, but with the loss of the disc space, we actually lose an inch or so in our height. So let's review the elderly musculoskeletal system and the osteoporosis that develops, especially in females after menopause and losing the hormone estrogen. You have spinal discs are narrowing, resulting in a kyphosis or a forward bending curve of the back. The joints are losing their flexibility and become more unstable and now they begin to have stress injuries. And finally, the skeletal muscle mass decreases around the spine itself. With a weakened bone structure, the vertebra themselves start to collapse. This presses in on the disc space in between and causes the disc space to rupture. And you'll notice here that the nucleus palposa or the soft center of the disc has ruptured and is pushing towards the back or the spinal cord. So we have a ruptured disc impinging on the spinal cord. At the same time, we notice that the spinal cord is going in the canal, but the canal is getting smaller. As we age, our spinal canal actually becomes smaller and we become more at risk for fracture and for central nervous system problems because of the nerves being impinged upon. So we see aging is a process. Is there any way that we can monitor this process? The answer is yes, with bone density testing. It's done for three reasons. First, it's to set a baseline. It's also to monitor for osteopenia and osteoporosis and give us an idea of how medications may or may not be affecting the disease process. 
as you know, we get two scores, a T score and a Z score. The T score is comparing us against our contemporaries, and the Z score is comparing where we are compared to a healthy 30-year-old who has peak muscle and bone mass. Let's take another look at that definition of osteoporosis. It is a skeletal disorder characterized by compromised bone strength predisposing to an increased risk of fracture. Bone strength reflects the integration of two main features, bone density and bone quality. Bone quality refers to the architecture, turnover, damage and accumulation such as microfractures and also the mineralization of the bone. So we take a look at our DEXA scan and we measure both bone density and bone mineral content. So why should we care? Well, first of all, you're doing a service as a healthcare provider. And secondarily, that's your job. We can start with the baseline scan, but then we're going to take subsequent scans over time to monitor how well the patient is doing or how poorly the patient is doing. This documentation will also give us a history where we can see how well or if the medications that we're giving to our patient are working to slow the progress of the osteoporosis Remember, this is a time-related progress where we're measuring the patient against themselves, their contemporaries, and against a base group so that we can score them to get a good idea of how to treat them. Let's see here. Human error, medical errors, the third leading cause of death for patients in the hospital, and how about are there human errors being made every day by all healthcare providers? As we alluded to earlier, DEXA is not a simple test in the sense that how well you do it gives us the quality of the examination at the end point. And that's why one tech can be better than another and one machine or facility better than another. There are other methods to take a look at bone density and we can utilize CT scanners, ultrasound, DEXA scanners, and other types of non-invasive tests for measurement of bone mineral densities. The idea here is that the DEXA scanner is the gold standard, gives the minimal amount of radiation. And remember, we're looking at bone mineral content. So with a DEXA scanner, a less than 1% difference in bone mineral density can be detected. Whereas if we're using x-ray, it takes a 40% difference in the bone image to make a diagnosis of osteoporosis. So instead of just saying metabolic disorders, osteoporosis, degenerative osteoarthritis or whatever, let's take a look at the actual functionality of the bone in the spine and see what happens and what we are measuring. Now we don't have time for an in-depth uh, anatomy course so what we're going to look at on the right here is disc space. We're going to look at a normal disc space, and then we're going to take a look at a bulging disc space, herniated disc, degenerative disc, thinning disc, and a fracture. The reason we're doing this is we need to see what is actually happening that we are recording when we take our scans. So if we take a look, we can see the healthy disc space. Now take below that space and see what you can see. Starting at the top, we've got a nice healthy disc space. We can also see the vertebra 
above is in good shape, but what's happening to the vertebral below that disc space? Does it look like this area is starting to degenerate and cave in or lose some of the cortex bone? You'll notice as this happens that all of a sudden we have an impinged nerve. The spinal canal is getting smaller and the space against the nerves is being pressed. Now let's look at the progression of the disease process as time goes by. So you can see getting old is nothing to laugh or smile about. You gotta take it seriously. Now let's look at pediatrics. What do you think about doing pediatrics? To tell you the truth, Unless you're in a medical facility with doctors and anesthesiologists at your beck and call, it's not a great idea. The reason I mention anesthesiologists is sometimes the child needs to be sedated and you have to have somebody to sedate the child, to watch the child, and take care of the child in case there is an emergency. Why do you think the child needs to be sedated? It'd be great if they could hold still, but give me a break. Now, another reason that I'm not real high on this with it not being in a medical center with a lot of different specialties available is the fact that we have a hard enough time getting a good quality reading on an adult DEXA scan. What about children? Do you think there's a big difference in their physical makeup especially by age. Does that mean we don't scan children? Well, of course it doesn't. What it does mean is that we only scan them with the right circumstances and having the data to be able to analyze the information that we get from our scans. There's a number of things that impact a child. They can be born with osteogenesis imperfecta. I remember when I was x-raying, a lot of times you'd have kids that break their bones a lot. If you look at the sclera of their eye, it's kind of blue, and that'll tell you that they probably have osteogenesis imperfecta. But there are a number of different types of diseases. Look at the Shriners Hospital or St. Jude's. Those are the type of hospitals that can use a good DEXA scanner. But as far as an outpatient facility goes, eh, that's up to you, but I think I'd wait on a medical center outside of a specialized environment that has all of the well-trained and experienced healthcare personnel and all the equipment available to do children, it's not a good idea as an outpatient type procedure. Pediatrics is difficult and it requires a lot of training and different variables plus special types of scanning techniques and procedures. For example, do you recognize the pediatric hip? We have the epiphyseal growth zones in it. We have the difference in the pelvis. We have a different density of the bone. We have different size. A lot of that is going to take a custom scan. Interesting as it may be, taking a look at all the patients and the differences between geriatrics and pediatrics and normal adults, it's time to get back and take a look at our scanner and the equipment. Please refer to one of our other DEXA presentations for this information.